pay you. Well, happy Monday. All right, so I recently had a request and it's just something I'm ready to do in my yard anyway, um, get my compost going again. So today's video is all about the simplest approaches a simplest approach that I've found to composting um, the easiest way to have success and um, I'm also I'm gonna test out a couple of um, new things that I want to try because I've got my bin um, that I got from the city of Glendale you can call the city of Glendale if you live there Mason Phoenix you can get free bins there too um, but so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna build um, I'm gonna start building a layer in that with you today and then I'm also I've got two bucket concepts because um, you know I've got tons of five gallon buckets around um, so I'm gonna try out um, two different styles and so I'll show you the buckets in a minute but I love the thought of the buckets because if you're like me and you've got a bunch of buckets or um, you're a little concerned about deep diving into composting right now um, it just seems like buckets would be an easy way to maybe get some compost going for yourself so I'm gonna show you um, those two buckets and what they look like and then um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about um, the easiest way that I found to collect food waste um, where I have success and where I don't have success I'm also going to talk about um, a composter that I had that I wasn't successful with and as we're doing that um, then I'm going to move right into building um, those piles if you will within those containers so let's head out over um, and get my stuff and let's get doing it this is the bin that I have from the city of Glendale and um, what they do is they just take um, their old recycling containers and they cut off the bottom and they put holes all in it and so it comes exactly like you see it and they'll just put it literally on your front doorstep so on the inside um, this is how magical it is <laughs> but it's really simple and it opens completely to the bottom and you you typically want that with your compost bin because it's going to enable little micro critters to get in there and help you do the composting work. I've had before in the past a um, one of those tumblers you know it's kind of stands up on the ground and um, you know it has this I'll even try to put a picture up here um, but those that's I had a real challenging time working with that type of tumbler and I think a reason why um, again most of these setups are most successful is they've got a way for stuff to get into the actual compost bin so this is um, I had my son Seth um, Put, do these for me and he says that if you decide to do this be sure and drill these holes before you cut the bottom off because he said he cut the bottom off first and it made it even more challenging to work with these so I'm gonna set these up and kind of like with my bin over here I'm gonna set them up over here in the shade I'm gonna find a levelish spot here and we're kind of running two experiments here with the buckets because um, maybe not everybody has a saw like we do um, um, so on one we're gonna be completely open to the ground and on the other we're gonna have this one that's got some holes and now I know from growing okra in these same buckets with these same holes and those buckets sitting on the ground that when we dump those buckets they were full of worms so we know that stuff is able to get through those holes and the reason why I want to test this out is because then that tells us that if you've got any old container that you can put some holes in and and it has holes on the bottom and it can sit on the ground then again that could be a small low-key type of composter for you and again a way to kind of build your faith and your uh, you know connection to wanting to do this now what if you think about um, compost I got to go get my gloves on here in a minute as I start digging and working on this when we switch over to my headband um, but think about it a little bit like 
making a yeast bread. So it's good to have a little bit of starter. So that's why I've kept some of my compost from my last batch down in here. Now, if you've never made compost before, you can use compost from the store. You can use some Bioflora, you can use some of EB Stone. Um, and, and so you just want a little bit of that in there to kind of get the microbes going in the breakdown process. The next thing I'm gonna tell you is, before we get started, is the first layer we're gonna build is always gonna be a brown layer to the bottom because we want the brown layers on the bottom and the top are kind of our protection layers and they keep the gooey stuff, like the stuff that comes from inside the kitchen, covered up so that it doesn't get yuck. And those are, and I always think about the brown parts as the major eaters in this process. So now I'm gonna go and flip over well I'm about to flip over to my headset so you get a bird's eye view of this and I'm also going to grab my food scraps the easiest way that I found um, and the most effective way for my kids even to collect scraps is just to freeze them um, and it's a, it's really good too because it really gets you know it starts the first stage of decomposition and if you think about it a lot of these things like as they defrost they're kind of yuck you know <laughs> they're already kind of mushed down and so by freezing them you get them off your counter you keep them from smelling i need to go get like i've started a container on the refrigerator and it's so gross i'm probably going to gag just trying to open it um so even though i keep trying to make a container on the kitchen counter i know what I know and that's that the smartest thing for me to do is when the kids are working on something is to just go ahead and have them peel or do whatever they're doing right into a shopping bag or a Ziploc bag and then I can put it in the freezer and whenever I'm ready to work on my compost pile, I can. So, and you'll see that as they go along, I always try to have them or I try to go and chop up. Now this is one I'm gonna have to get the scissors for and chop this down some more. Uh, but this, again, like I said, now I, want, I brought this bag out here and it doesn't belong in here, but I brought it to make a point that this is one thing that I don't really save for my compost bin, and that's my onions and my onion skins. I save those to make stock with. So try to, you're gonna find if you put these in your compost bin, now these carrot pieces could easily go in there, um, but they're also the butts and kind of the ugly ends. So I just threw them in here with my compost or with my stock bag. So that's a side tip is try to avoid putting like your onion pieces in there. Put your onion pieces in another bag in the freezer and soon I'll get those out and we'll make some stock and we'll make some vegetable stock in the crock pot or on the stove and I'll show you how to do that. Um, but otherwise, this is, you know, this is one, now I just, and it's unfortunate because I just had Seth clean out the refrigerator yesterday and I know that there was a lot of stuff in there that I could have used. And this is some broccoli that actually, like when he cleaned the refrigerator out, he put it in the Ziploc bag, but it's all flimsy and mush. Now I can throw this into one of my bins just like it is, but it's really going to be best broke down if I get it down to sizes like this. So I'll get the kitchen scissors here in a minute and start that or do that when I get to kneading those. But right now, this is what we're gonna work with. Um, and this is how I do my piles, real simply, you know. So right here, I just had Joe grab some leaves from here in the yard and um, that's, and so this is really how basic it is. So I, I kind of thought now, after I showed you these buckets, that they might do just as good beside the container that I've already got here. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them over here and then I'm going to go and I'm going to get some of what's already in here and I'm going to make a first layer down there on the bottom. Hey, well, one of you girls bring the, my hose over here now. And that's another point about using frozen vegetables is because as they defrost, they're kind of consistently adding, um, moisture to your compost bin and out here in Arizona 
um, you know, you're probably like me and it's going to be hard to keep up with when to keep it wet. So if every week you're putting a little bit of stuff that is slowly breaking down then and slowly defrosting, then you're kind of always keeping it inherently damp in there. So I need to get, uh, I'm going to dump this out because I might not need it now. I'm going to dump this out because I want to get a bit more of this out so that I can go deeper with the first pile that I do in here. And I've got my old gloves on because this is going to get yucky in a minute when I start messing with these wet foods. So I try to keep my layers even, but if they're not perfectly even, then just try to make the brown, that's this, brown as paper, brown as dried leaves, dried grass, anything. See, now look down there. There's the, this is my starter, see? So I got some browns on the bottom and now I'm gonna put some starter in here because this is the golden goodness or the black gold goodness down here at the bottom. And this is gonna be the starter that gets our next piles going. So now, like I said, I'm just, cause I'm building three piles. I'm building one in here and I'm building one down there. And so every week I just, or every week or so when I think about it, I'll come out and I'll, jeez. Josie, Maisie, turn it off. How's my shot? Just had a water hose explode behind me. <laughs> when I think about it, and as I was trying to say a while ago, um, you wanna if you wanna kind of try to keep your layers even, but if you can't, then try to make your browns be a little bit more than your greens. Because I always think about because sometimes it starts looking that way to me. When I come out here, I feed it. That's why I feed it and it's eaten. Because now they got this a little bit more how I want it. But I'm still going to scoop it up on the sides. Because I'm going to use some of that as the top layer. Like that. So, if I, so this is building a new layer for me. Now I'm going to come and I'm going to get food. I'm going to feed it. And since this is the beginning and, and I'm already kind of working it in a container, it's not going to look like that even of a layer um, inside of this. But you'll see over here that I'm about that deep with browns. And now I'm going to come in with these greens and be just about as thick. So greens are going to be any kind of food waste from the kitchen, any kind of cuts that you take from the garden. You know, like when you're cleaning up non-diseased and non-infested plants, you can take those cuttings and put them directly into your compost, just like a green. And um, as long as they haven't dried out yet, then they're considered a green. Now see, that's another almost two inches there, and about two there. We'll still take, See, I got some ice hunks in here. Who cares? Again, it's just moisture. That's gonna, I got a smaller bag. So yeah, anything from the yard that you cut that's not diseased or infested, you can put in here. And then like another thing I'm gonna do soon is I'm gonna build more of a freestanding pile and start incorporating the bunnies poo into an active compost pile. And when we do that, her poo to me and the alfalfa that's gonna be coming from her litter tray is all, I'm gonna treat that as a green. I still need to get my scissors to cut up this broccoli. So, oh, there's some scissors right there. Not ideal, but that'll work. 
So we're basically going to get about one layer in here today. And again, um, that's what you do is you just, you come out, you feed it some greens, and then you're going to top it with a good layer of browns and that could be shredded paper that can be leaf waste from the yard that can be dried grass from the yard um, your paper bags from the grocery store so that could be a lot of different things for you and sometimes like if I have a, a seedling or something fail you might even see me just throw the whole cup and this is gonna be hard I might end up throwing a big chunk of it in there <laughs> but it's not uncommon for me to even just because again most of my soil is basically compost anyway so with that being said now over here on my side buckets let me just go ahead and dump everything that's in here <coughs> out there we go and i just had a, my water hose exploded so i don't know that you're going to get to watch me water this so i'm just going to again put about two inches over what was there and let the top and bottom start working on breaking down what's in the bucket same thing over here even that out and again that creates kind of a lid for us and I think I do have the lids to these buckets in the garage and if not then I will I'll use something else. Um, so now I'm going to pull back a little bit from the sides that I had raked over and now I've got me a new layer going in my bin and so when I come in next week or next time I'll see an indention because everything that's in the green middle part will be eaten up and it'll sink down and that's what we'll keep doing until it doesn't sink down anymore then we'll know that it's ready to turn and so that's the thing that I also do to keep this from being complicated complicated is I don't focus on constantly turning it I just let it sit now that's gonna be the easier cool thing about these buckets is that we can turn them faster and we can turn them over as compost faster so we're gonna kind of continue doing a small update maybe once a month on these bins so that you can feel like you're getting ongoing support with your compost so when you water your garden try to come out here and give your bins or your buckets a little mist or your piles and otherwise um, just leave them alone keep them a little bit moist and leave them alone and feed them as you can and the easiest way to feed them is just with a freezing the kitchen way so there you have it there's my three bins and um, once I get my water hose straightened out then I'll moisten them down but there's compost building with me well I hope that you found that super helpful and that you are encouraged to build some type of compost pile for yourself whether get yourself a container from your local waste management um, or use a bucket or if you've got a lot of space um, and you kind of heard me talk about that um, we're eventually going to work on just making a free kind of standing pile with um, some pallets so there's a lot of different ways that you can do this um, and, and uh, hopefully you see that these are the simplest ways to get it done so have the best day ever and thanks so much for stopping in whenever you get a chance Thank you.